Hi everyone! Welcome to this quick tutorial on how to convert Apple ProRes RAW to Cinema DNG using PlayPro Studio. PlayPro Studio has a few advantages when it comes to ProRes RAW transcoding. First of all, it exists on macOS and on Windows. Next, when transcoding to ProRes H.264 or H.265, it includes all and any source clip metadata in the transcoded files. And when going to Cinema DNG, it supports all cameras and devices out there without exception. And it also writes accurate raw metadata to the resulting Cinema DNG files. If you haven't heard of PlayPro Studio yet, here is what else it does. It allows you to organize, review, color grade, and convert your raw material to other formats. And it does all of that equally on macOS and Windows. Now recently we've added three more features to its toolset. You can now trim clips before exporting them and only export the needed range of any given shot. PlayPro Studio now ships with a new feature which helps you to offload and backup your footage from the recording media and make sure that everything is copied safe and secure including checksums and even a media hash list. And of course, the whole point of this video, you can now convert ProRes raw material not only to conventional ProRes H.264 and H.265, but also to Cinema DNG with various compression levels. Let's dive right into it and import a couple of ProRes raw clips. Here we go. Now the first thing I want to point out is all the metadata that PlayPro Studio reads from the original source file by looking at the metadata stack over here camera make and model, used recorder and firmware version etc. Everything is here. Now we could export these clips right away as Cinema DNG image sequences by going to the render menu right away. But let's just take a quick look at our footage by going to the player tab. Let's call up our scopes and scrub through the timeline. Depending on which camera was connected to the Atomos recorder, we get different debayering options with each clip. As you can see, PlayPro Studio also allows to debay the footage into a whole range of color spaces and transfer curves. That being said, whatever we change here in the debayer settings won't matter for our Cinema DNG export, as that will export the raw bayer pattern pre debayer. However, if we were to render out, let's say, conventional ProRes or H.264 files, any changes we make in here would be reflected in the rendered ProRes or H.264 files. So for creating dailies for editing, we could do quick white balance or exposure fixes in here before transcoding. The other thing I'd like to point out is the new AV trim menu over here. It not only allows us to sync external audio to a clip, but we can also shorten down any clip using either the numeric controls here or by using the playhead on the mini timeline and clicking the set buttons for in and out point. Back to the construct tab. If we want to just convert our ProRes raw material to Cinema DNG, we simply hit the render button right here and set the output to ProRes raw to Cinema DNG. This render option will always render at source resolution, hence the corresponding options here are grayed out. Next, we can select the compression for our DNG files. PlayPro Studio allows us to export uncompressed in 12 and 16 bit as well as lossless compressed 12 and 16 bit. Lossless compression is roughly 2 to 1 ratio, but it always depends on the image content. Lastly, PlayPro offers lossy compression in 3 to 1 and 4 to 1 ratio, which we found to be the most useful options as they result in the same or even slightly lower file sizes than the original ProRes raw clips, while maintaining perfect image integrity. For these two compression levels, we also chose a compression scheme which is optimized for DaVinci Resolve for best playback performance. Of course, we can include audio in our transcode, which will result in a separate WAV file with the same name as the DNG image sequence. Lastly, we can set our output folder and enable Use Source Name, so our DNGs will have the exact same name as the source ProRes RAW files. The Unique Files option is only necessary if you have the same source clip twice in your timeline. In that case, PlayPro Studio will add a pre or post fix to each clip name, making it unique. Now all we have to do is hit OK and let PlayPro Studio spit out Cinema DNG and broadcast WAV files. 
Checking the render folder, we can see the folder name according to the source clip name, as well as all files in there. Now, let's quickly fire up Resolve and check whether all comes in as expected. Fresh project, let's select our DNG folder and create a timeline from it. Ok, now we can set global defaults in the project settings, but to show things a little better, I'm gonna do this on the color page with the DNG raw settings for each individual clip. As you can see, Resolve offers a couple of options for color space and gamma to debay the raw data too. This is the same for all in any DNG, and generally a white color gamut and block gamma debayer will serve well for most scenarios. Let's also take a quick look at the info page to check the timecode. If we compare that to what we see inside Play Pro Studio with the original ProRes RAW file, we can tell it's a match. Alright, this is it for this tutorial on how to convert ProRes RAW material to Cinema DNG. I hope this was useful and see you next time. Bye!